Hey y'all, so just got done with today's workout. I really like this one. We use it as a benchmark. We use it as a testing workout. Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, and it's a good one because it's for load and so you kind of have to build on that weight but it really gives you some motivation to shoot for it. So what we have is Gwyn, 15, 12, 9, touch and go clean and jerks. You choose your weight. Your goal is to do the heaviest weight possible through them. You can change weights throughout, but really what we're trying to do is stick with one weight the whole way. So what I would recommend is if you're retesting this one for, based off of a previous benchmark, try and beat that uh, weight for each of them. If this is your first time doing it, it's pretty hard to get that first weight correct. So feel free to do it and then play around with it up and down, up or down. So give yourself a note for next time so you know what to do next time. So this is really one that works well when you do it time and time again. So a couple things, the clean and jerks need to be touch and go. So 15 clean and jerks. Touch and go just means you cannot rest. You cannot put the barbell on the ground. It can only tap the ground. So we see a lot of people pushing it and they put it on the ground and reset and go. We can't do that. You have to keep it in your hand tap the ground. It can only be on the ground for a split second. If you want to rest overhead or in the front rack or holding it, that's fine. You can't rest it on your back or anything, but really it should just be unbroken going. And as soon as you start to rest, that's where we know people are really in trouble. And for the most part, what we see is people who just keep moving the whole time do much better than the ones who try and stop and regrip because everything just starts to blow up. Clearly I should have waited longer before I did this video because I'm out of breath. Anyway, the other thing, you can rest as long as you want in between these rounds. Typically we'll give classes like three to five minutes of rest. Uh, and a lot of people mistake this. They read it and they go 15, then they try and go 12 and nine with no rest. Uh, and if you're going with like no rest in between, then really uh, you're gonna be way off on the amount of weight we could potentially do. So touch and go, four load, rest as long as you want. Typically we give classes between three and five minutes to rest. So just try and uh, make sure everything's uh, as recovered as possible. So I like to remember that muscle contraction is the only way your lymphatic system works. So even though on this one, your forearms and the quads by your knees are gonna be just smoked in between stuff, I try and flex my hands, just get my forearms to flex, walk around, move around so it doesn't just pull up. So. Really, the other things we see is this is a great testing one, especially for barbell technique, uh, because the people who can go straight to the front rack and they're clean and have that ability to catch the clean and go straight into a jerk and have the ability to come straight from the jerk back to the front rack position and the people who can let go and regrip the hook grip, there's like five or six barbell skills. Each one of them will significantly improve the amount of weight you're able to do. So this is a really cool one as far as a benchmark testing for your barbell skills, not just your fitness and your strength. Uh, because as you work on each of these little things, you're gonna be able to be more and more efficient in this workout. So uh, just for kind of the record, uh, anywhere between 50 and 60% of a one rep max means your barbell technique is pretty good. Uh, what we see if you're starting out, you probably want to start somewhere in the, like the 40, 45% of your one rep max clean and jerk range. Uh, and if that barbell technique is really good and your fitness is really good, you might be up close to that 60% range for this one. So uh, it's a fun one. Do a lot of warming up, make sure overhead, spend that warm up time working on those barbell skills we're going to use and then kind of stick to it. The other huge, huge, huge thing, especially when we use this as a testing workout, uh, and a lot of people think that it's like, oh, just positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. When you have nothing but positive thoughts, then when something gets hard or something doesn't go as planned, you're not ready for it. Then you have a lot of reckoning to deal with. So think of, I like to think of what these things are going to feel like, not from the sense of let's be negative or let's be positive, from the sense of here's what I'm expecting it to feel like. And if this happens, here's how I'm gonna respond. So what I know from doing this one a bunch is I know about reps six to eight, somewhere in that round of 15, my grip is gonna start really going, 
I'm gonna kind of have that like flushed feeling of uh, that kind of energy system switching over and I'm gonna have kind of a fight or flight response between six uh, and eight. We see so many people only get nine out of the first 15 and it's because it's really hard on that first set to go past a number you're gonna do two rounds later and then go past the number you have to do the next round when you're just dead to get to that 15. So you just have to be so mentally in it and just know that it is completely normal for reps six to eight to feel like, I don't even know if I can do one more rep and you just keep doing a rep, keep doing a rep. So once I kind of get to that point, if I'm on six, I'm like, just get to nine, get to nine, get to nine. When I'm on nine, it's like, get to 12, get to 12. And as soon as I'm around 12, it's like, I got three more, no matter what, I can get three done. The other thing that happens on this one is it gets a little sloppy. So if your technique is really, really good, but you're really pushing the limit on the weight you can get, you know we're gonna maybe lose the hook grip on a hand, or we're gonna catch one a little forward, or this or that. So there's gonna be so many reasons for you to want to just put it down because you messed something up. So what I tell myself is like, not doing 15 is not an option. It is not an option. And so I know it's gonna get hard around six, I'm just gonna push and push one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. I know things are gonna go wrong. My quads are gonna get smoked or my grip is gonna go, or I'm gonna be barely holding on to it. I think you'll see it on that first round of 15. My last rep, I was holding on to it just fingertips on one hand. And instead of being like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to pull it hard as high, I was thinking, oh, I'm not gonna be able to pull it as high. I'm gonna have to go get this one. And so I had to pull down lower and get deeper into a squat to go get it. So thinking of what it's gonna feel like and trying to foresee maybe some of the negative things that might happen is gonna allow you to be positive during the workout. So in the workout, I'm not worried about these things. I expect these things. And if everything just goes perfectly fine, what a nice surprise to have. But when things go wrong and you're ready and you're expecting it to go wrong, you are so much more capable of dealing with it and pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. So enjoy this one, 15 touch and go clean and jerks, heaviest as possible. If you're just starting it, probably about 40, 45% of a clean and jerk max. Uh, if you're retesting it, try and beat what you did last time. When I'm warming up every time for this one, uh, just one rep or three reps feels so, so heavy. So don't let reps one to three mess with your head too much. It's okay for those to feel heavy. You just gotta stick in there, stick in there. Rest three to five minutes, probably as much as you need. Then an unbroken set of 12, rest, unbroken set of nine. The beauty is go at that 15 with everything you got. Expect it to get hard at six, just one couple reps at a time. Expect things to go wrong and handle it, handle it, handle it. Once you're at the 12, it is amazing the motivation of, I worked so hard to get that 15 done, I'm getting this 12 no matter what. And then when you get to the nine, it's the same thing. You're just like, I've worked so hard to get the 15 and 12. It's like, there's no way I'm not getting nine on this. And then when you're going into each of these sets with that mindset of no matter what, I'm gonna get it done, you're gonna get it done. So work that technique, technique and efficiency is everything on this one. And then it's using that and leaning on that and just making it happen no matter what, make it happen. Enjoy this one, it's fun, write it down, we're gonna do it a bunch, great benchmark to have. We'll have uh, at-home variations in the description on the workout blog. Talk to y'all soon.